Well, hello again, and welcome to another episode of Holding History. Uh, I just realized that this is kind of starting to look like I'm trying to give you a shot of the moon, uh, but this is not a moon. That is a coin. Uh, just a lot of contrast against this black background, so you'll have to forgive my photography. Uh, anyway, enough about my cinematography skills or lack thereof. Uh, we're going to present a coin to you here. This is another coin that's part of the continuing set that I'm building in uh, honor of my uh, late grandfather. And uh, this one is to commemorate his uh, service in the United States Army directly uh, after the end of World War II uh, in the nation of the Philippines. Uh, so this is going to be, remember I promised uh, to show you a coin that was struck in the United States that's meant uh, for uh, another country, a commemorative coin. And this is the 1947 San Francisco Mintage uh, Douglas MacArthur 50 Centavos uh, commemorative coin that was intended for a collection in the Philippines. Uh, so uh, there you are. Here's, here's the obverse. This is a fairly nicely struck example. Uh, many of these had a very mushy uh, low relief strike. I'm not sure what the process was behind that. The San Francisco Mint is known for really well struck coins, but this one uh, by and large most of the strikes are very very weak. Uh, this one's fairly bold. You get to see most of the features of uh, uh, the general's face, some of the details in the hat, and we'll go ahead and flip over uh, to the reverse side here. Uh, nothing special back here, just uh, really uh, utilitarian uh, designations, the Philippines, 50 centavos denomination, uh, 1947, and the small S mint mark that you'll see there. Uh, but and I would assume this is the shield of the Commonwealth of the Philippines. Um, and of course, they became their own independent nation uh, not too long after this coin uh, was sent over and, and uh, circulated or collected there in that nation. Uh, anyway, the designer of this coin uh, from what I understand, the reverse and the obverse, uh, you have uh, Laura Garden Frazier, who also designed uh, quite a few other uh, earlier commemorative halves, and just a lot of just a very well-known sculptor and wife of James Earl Frazier, who designed uh, several important coins as well, including, of course, the Buffalo Nickel. Uh, so, um, there's a lot of interesting facts about this particular coin, uh, not one that I knew that existed uh, for uh, quite some time. And then all of a sudden, quite a few of them popped up on YouTube. Uh, a lot of silver stackers are uh, collecting these to add to the collection, uh, add to their collections. Uh, but anyway, a lot of a lot again, a lot of history behind this. Um, uh, I I read one story that uh, they did strike about 200,000 of these 50 centavos coins, and uh, also they made a larger one peso coin, and those uh, were very similar in design. Uh, 100,000 pesos uh, were struck, and then uh, uh, 50, 000, uh, 200,000, I'm sorry, of these 50 centavos. Um, uh, there's some disagreement about the composition of these. A lot, most of the YouTubers that I see posting these are saying that they're 90% silver. I believe in actuality that they are 75% silver. Uh, so the composition is uh, a little more uh, diluted, or whatever the, the, the proper metallurgical term for that would be. Uh, but 75% uh, silver on these are a little bit smaller than a regular half dollar. Uh, the diameter is only about 27 and a half millimeters. Um, anyway, but there is a story that circulates about these that they weren't quite as well received uh, in the Philippines as they were hoping for uh, at the uh, San Francisco Mint. And uh, quite a few of these were being hoarded up and stolen and transported in some way or another to some of the Japanese occupants that remained in the Philippines after World War II. And in order to keep these out of enemy hands, I'm not sure if they didn't have the means to melt them down or exactly what, but uh, the, uh, quite a few of these were thrown into some body of water there in the Philippines. I don't think it was Manila Bay, but uh, some, uh, some bay, some body of water there in the Philippines, quite a few of these were deliberately uh, just kind of cast into the bottom of the sea to keep them out of uh, the hands of the Japanese at that time. So again, a lot of history behind these. These are fairly easy to get. Uh, there aren't very many that have been certified, so certified ones come at quite a premium. Uh, this is a raw coin. I have a case ordered for it that should be here shortly. But again, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoy. The next video coming up is the big one.